Good day and welcome to Christmas here at Lakefield Lutheran Church. We are glad you were joining us, however you're doing that out there um, electronically. It's good to have you uh, be a part of our community for this special celebration of our Savior's birth. We give thanks for the musicians who um, throughout the past couple of weeks have been working hard on music and coming in to record it for this service. We appreciate that they'll be a part of this worship service as well. So I will, on behalf of the staff here at Lakeview and the congregation, I simply want to wish everybody a very Merry Christmas. And um, I hope that we all experience light and peace, the light and peace of Christ uh, in the new year of 2021. So we will begin this service by singing several prelude hymns. The words will appear on your screen.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. <clears throat> and let us pray. Almighty God, <clears throat> you made this holy birth shine with the brightness of the true light. Grant that here on earth we may walk in the light of Jesus' presence, and in the last day wake to the brightness of his glory. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We now hear Aidan Pownell sing a vocal solo of How Glad I Am Each Christmas Eve, and that will be followed by Tasha Dusnap playing a piano solo entitled Jesu Bambino. The Gospel reading for Christmas comes from the second chapter of the Gospel of St. Luke. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, the city of David called Bethlehem 
because Joseph was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged, and who was expecting a child. Now while they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son, and wrapped him in bands of cloth, and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn. In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom God favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste, and they found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in a manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. Before there can be a new beginning. 
Like everyone else, I'm looking forward to the end of 2020. And I hope and I pray that we have a new beginning in 2021 with a safe and an effective vaccine. This hasn't been our best year, as you all know, because none of you are in this room. And when this pandemic finally does end, I'm filled with wonder about what new beginnings will present themselves. Endings and beginnings. So today, we celebrate a baby. You know that in order for a baby to be born, in order for that particular baby to be born, Mary's pregnancy had to end. Before we could recognize the beginning of the gift of salvation for the world, endings had to take place. We know that the world has forever been changed because of this baby. The end of Mary's pregnancy brought about the beginning of the revelation of God's kingdom. And because we today know the whole story, we also know that this baby had to die and to be raised again for another new beginning to take place. The ending of this baby's life meant the beginning of a new life for each of us. His ending brought the beginning of the promise of the resurrection. Life ended so that new life could begin. Endings and beginnings, we experience them often. We celebrate them regularly. So this is my 20th Christmas here at Lakeview. And boy, do I wish that you could all be right here in this room with me right, right now. I wish that I could look out and see this sanctuary jam-packed with people. You and your extended family members and many other guests from the community and the neighborhood around us, just like every other Christmas. It's so weird to be standing in this room preaching a Christmas story to essentially nobody. Terry and Lynn are the only other ones in this big space. But since we can't be together physically this year, I am grateful for all the pictures, and they're shown on the Christmas tree, all the pictures that you have, you've sent in and that are hanging behind me today. Those pictures, your pictures, are our reminder that we are together this year spiritually and emotionally. These pictures, the ones on the tree, remind us that a pandemic cannot separate us from what we hold dear and where we place our faith. The pictures on our tree remind me of a community who has been together to celebrate many, many endings and beginnings. Those pictures remind me of endurance and perseverance and the fact that this pandemic will not separate us from the love of God. So I guess in a sense, I'm preaching to a Christmas tree tonight instead of real life people. But I see your faces, so I feel okay. Now we also know that this is my final Christmas with you. We know that there's another ending on the doorstep. My career as a parish pastor is going to end in two weeks. Now this ending is going to be tough for me and for Chris, and I've heard from many of you that it will be difficult for you as well. That's why even as we celebrate the past, it's important for us to focus on the new beginnings that come when things end. For me personally, I have to focus on a new beginning in retirement. It's going to be a whole new world. Boy, Chris reminds me of that every day. Some of you have already gotten there ahead of me. Well, I have absolutely loved my career as a parish pastor. Soon, I am going to have the opportunity, the opportunity to do things that I have not had time to do while I served a congregation. I can play more piano. Maybe I'll become a church musician. I think I'm arrogant enough for that. 
I know I can exercise more regularly. Who knows? Maybe the next time you see me in the grocery store, I'll have lost 30 pounds. And I want to learn to speak Spanish, and I'd like to learn how to weave on a floor loom. I can volunteer in my retirement to keep teach kids to read because I'd love to do that. And I might take a photography class, and I'd absolutely be thrilled to be able to teach sociology in some college classrooms like I have done in the past. In the summer, I can do some gardening, and once we're able to do it again, Chris and I can travel. But most importantly, in my retirement, I am hoping that I can spend more time with my wife and my daughter and my son-in-law, lucky him, and with Huck and Hugo, those two wonderful and extremely lively grandsons that I have. Oh, I'm not happy about the ending part. I've been crying over it ever since last October. I've had some guilt feelings as well. I'll get over them, but I just wanted you to know they're there. But with that ending comes a new beginning. And I am looking forward to the challenge of that new beginning. For you as a congregation, that new beginning is about to commence as well. In January, you're going to have a supply pastor for four weeks. And then in February, you're going to experience an interim pastor who's already been assigned here. And this person will stay with you until you call a new permanent pastor. This new beginning can have some challenges, but it will also produce some great excitement because you have some excellent leadership in this congregation. As we acknowledge the ending, we can also look hopefully, that's a theme of Advent, remember, hopefully, at what these new beginnings can bring. New people bring new ideas, new ways of thinking, new ways of looking at things, new hopes and new dreams and new patterns for ministry. Laura in the church office is actually wondering if the next pastor might even come in the door in the morning and offer her a compliment. That would be different. It would be new. And maybe it can happen. Endings and beginnings keep us excited and forward thinking. They can challenge us in good ways. They prevent us from becoming place, uh, complacent and too settled in a single way of doing things. A new pastor in this place can have some dramatic positive changes on this great community. The birth of a Savior in Bethlehem was a new beginning over 2,000 years ago. Not everyone felt good about it. There was some fear and there was some apprehension, even though shepherds were terrified. There was anger and there was some hate. A king killed children. But it brought dramatic, positive changes for the world. That's what Christmas is about. It's our time to remember and to celebrate the end of Mary's pregnancy and the beginning of the kingdom of God come to earth in the form of a baby. That new beginning brought people from all walks of life together in care and compassion. It is a beginning that we absolutely love to remember every year and next year you'll be back in this sanctuary doing just that together. And so I won't disregard the emotions and the anxiety that we will face together as my time here at Lakeview ends. But I will lift up the hope and the expectation of all the new possibilities in this place and there are going to be new possibilities and a lot of hope and a lot of expectation because I understand, I believe that you fully understand the gift of grace brought to you at Christmas. So celebrate the ending with me. Celebrate the beginning with me. And celebrate the presence of Christ in our lives through all of it. Amen. We now hear a vocal duet entitled Strangers in Bethlehem, sung by Chris Kirst and John Dyer.
Let's pray. Loving God, help us remember the birth of Jesus so that we may share in the song of the angels, the gladness of the shepherds, and the worship of the magi. We pray for your church throughout the world and for this congregation and its leaders as we begin a time of pastoral transition. Make every church a safe and trustworthy community where people can rely on one another and where they can grow in faith and love. Close the door of hate and open the door of love all over the world. Let kindness come with every gift and good desires with every greeting. Deliver us from evil by the blessing which Christ brings and teach us to be merry with clear hearts. Make a just and peaceful future for Christians and Jews and shape a just and peaceful future for Israelis and Palestinians in the land of your ancient promise where Christ was born. We pray for other people of the book who love and follow your truth revealed through the prophet Muhammad. Move us to pray together, to listen to each other's stories, and to walk in the way of peace. Forgive our sins against you and against each other, Cleanse the polluted streams of pride in us and in our land and in every part of the world where terror and war should end. Thank you for health care workers and all those who continue to spend tireless hours seeking an end to the pandemic. Guide us to be responsible with our resources. Build love and respect for every person, adult and child, old and young, of every gender and sexual orientation, and of every ethnic identity. May racial injustice end. Bring comfort and hope to all people who grieve today. Bring a rich measure of your healing power to anyone who is struggling with health, including those we now name out loud or in the silence of our hearts. Draw together our prayers silent and spoken, as we pray together the traditional words of the prayer of Jesus, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. At this time, we are very grateful that um, the three tenors have agreed to come to Madison, Wisconsin and join us for a hymn. They will be singing, Come All Ye Shepherds. And after the three tenors sing, we will hear a cello solo by Dana Dalton entitled, What Child Is This? <laughs> Shepherds, leave now your sheep and come to the stable, stable so small. Come see the baby born in a manger. Come, come, and hear now the angels come. Angels are singing. Oh, 
Almighty God, who sent the Holy Spirit to Mary, proclaimed joy through the angels, sent the shepherds with good news, and let the magi by a star bless you this day through the word made flesh. Amen. God comes to us now to embrace us. The baby we see in the manger is the light of the world. He is peace for the universe. The baby in the manger is grace upon all grace. Let us now depart like Mary, pondering these wonders in our hearts and anxious to love and serve this newborn King. Amen. <laughs> 